Oh, welcome back this week. Oh, it's been a time and a year that I've gone so far with so many things that have happened this year. And we are grateful. Join me and let just honor the Lord and give him praise for he is good and his mercy is forever. His mercies endure it forever. Father, we are grateful for your goodness, for your mercy over this year. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your outstretched hand. Thank you, Lord God, for the display of your very protection. We are grateful, Father. We thank you for your mercies. You are such a great God a good God, a loving Father. We are grateful for your embrace, Lord, this year. We thank you, Father. We are grateful, my Father. We lift up your holy name, Jesus. We thank you. You have been our hiding place. You have been our secret place. You have been our refuge, our fortress. And Lord God, we thank you. We bless your name for each and every one, Lord God. Lord, we thank you for your mercies over us. We are grateful, Lord God, for your kindness. We are grateful. We confess that you have been our secret place, our place, our secret place. You have been our refuge. You have been the one in the midst of us. You have been the one who has kept us. And Lord God, we are grateful. We are grateful for your mercies. We are grateful for the name of Jesus. We are grateful for the blood of the Lamb. We thank you, Father, for 2020. We are grateful. We love you, Abba Father. We thank you today. We bless you for families, for friends, Lord, for our children for our loved ones. We thank you for what you have done, for what only you can do and you are doing and still doing. We are grateful, Father. We bless your name. We give you honor in Jesus' mighty name. You know, the scripture tells us we should enter into his gate with thanksgiving and into his court with praise. The Bible says we should be thankful unto him and bless his name. Oh yeah, that's what we've done. That's what we should do. That's what we should uh, do uh, 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 every time. I'm coming to you once again. I'm excited that you and I are seeing the end of this year. We have an opportunity to say, thank you, Father. We have an opportunity to say, thank you, Jesus. We have an opportunity to declare the goodness of God. God has been a good God. Oh yes, he has been a good and a great God. That's the reason why. That's the reason why this, 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 uh, this uh, segment is, is, to, is to reflect. I've chosen this to reflect on what has happened in 2020. In 2020, if you were to write your story, it would be different from mine. If somebody else were to write their story, it would be different from yours and mine. But we are grateful. You know, and, and, and the scripture tells us, I'm taking a few scriptures, uh, you know. Uh, Proverbs tells us, uh, Proverbs 11, 14 tells us, where there is no counsel, the people fall. The people fall. But in the multitude of counsel, there is safety. In the multitude of counsel, there is safety. I believe that looking back at 2020, we should be able to say, this is what I have been able to draw from this year. This is the lesson I have learned. You know, this is the lesson I have learned. The Bible also tells us that without counsel, plans go on. Ah, you know, but in a multitude of counselors, there they are established. Oh yeah, glory. The Bible also tells us in Proverbs chapter 24, verse number 6. He said, for by, by wise counsel, you will, wage, you will wage your war, your own war, your own war. You will wage your own war. Oh yeah, for by wise counsel, by wise counsel, you will wage your own war. 
and in the multitude of counsel, very safety. So having looked at all these various scriptures this morning, we want to draw what is it that I have learned from this year. What is it that I've learned? Number one, number one, I've learned through this pandemic how to live a simplified life. Oh yeah, simplified life. How to simplify things. Oh yeah, how to do, I dress less now. <laughs> I dress less. Yes. Yes, I drive less. I drive less. Oh yes, I've traveled least this year. Oh yeah, I've traveled least this year. So, you know, uh, uh, living is, I've looked at so many things, I've been part of so many programs, and I've seen that, there, you know, there, there can be excesses, excesses that we can do without. Oh yeah, so many things that I've seen this year that have told me that living a simple life is, is an investment. It's worth it. It's worth it. Simple, oh, simplified life. Oh yeah. I socialize less. I would love to socialize, but what? But with social distance, you know, we socialize less. Are you listening to me very carefully? So, 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 so. And what have I seen and I've learned? I've learned the importance of family. And when I'm talking about family, there are two types of family for me. There is my spiritual family, that is the church, the believer, oh, and and my physical family. How important that is. The Bible says that we should not forsake the assembly of the children of God, which is the manner of some. Very, very vital. I've been able to draw. I've been able to draw from friends. I've been able to draw from my spiritual family. I've been able to be in fellowship, in prayer, in the study of the word. It has helped me. I've heard messages. It has, it has, it has, it has, it has, it has provoked me. Oh yeah. I've, I've seen the importance of my spiritual life. That my spiritual life is vital, absolutely vital to my existence. To my existence is vital. I've seen the importance of relating with my family, family, my wife, my children. You know, how important they are. How important they are. You know, my feet. Oh yeah. Oh, no, one of the things that I've also seen this year is, the, is, is, is how important my health should be how important health somebody say health is wealth in fact timothy paul writing to timothy in first timothy chapter 4 verse 8 it says bodily exercise profited little bodily exercise profited little but that little is vital in a year like this pandemic your bodily exercise is is an investment to you living a healthy life being fit you know very very important very important it's not a choice is a must you know oh yeah this 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 virus has hit and hit very hard and so when Paul says bodily exercise profited, profited, he's talking about, he's talking about us have taken time, taken time to keep fit, taking time to sleep well, taking time to eat appropriately, taking time to exercise. Oh yeah, it may be little, but if the scripture tells you that it profits, you know, it's talking about uh, 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 a year like this. It's talking about a season like this whereby it deals to you. Uh, it can mean whether you're going to be alive or you're going to be dead. Bodily exercise. What have I learned? What have I learned through this pandemic? That the coming of Jesus is evident. It's very eminent. Sin scripture of sin scripture has been un unraveled. That the coming, that Jesus is coming. Everything that, uh, that the scripture tells us about the end time and Jesus is coming, is going to come. He will come. And that has provoked me to think, to set my thoughts on things that are above. And what have I thought about it? Death. Death is imminent. So many people have died to prepare. Death. 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 All around. Death is, 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 is imminent. 
and we need to prepare. We need to prepare. It's something that we don't want to talk about. Uh, you know, one of the uh, Jamaican uh, uh, songwriters said, everybody wants to go to heaven, nobody wants to die. You know, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, it's an aspect of our life that we must talk about. So what, do I, what have I learned about? You need to plan ahead. Oh, the year is running ahead, running out now. You don't need to plan on the 31st of this year. You need to start planning now. What do you need to plan for? You need to plan about your, you need to plan. You know, have a spiritual goal, right? Have a spiritual goal. I've always said that the days of, of, of God's visitation are not the days of preparation. The days of God's visitation are not the days of preparation. So what do I need to plan? I need to plan. I need to have spiritual goals. Spiritual goals. Soul winning. What do I, what am I doing about winning souls for Christ? I need to have professional goals. Physical, educational goals, marital goals, financial goals, oh yeah, relational goals. I need to have all the, all of this. You don't wait until the last minute and start planning. Oh yeah, what's 2021 going to look like? What is it going to look like? What do you want it to look like? It's, it's time to plan. It's time to plan. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. I'm praying today that the grace of God will rest upon you. The peace of God will go with you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you for joining us.